Hello and welcome to Nightline. I'm Raymond Go. Our top stories. Movement control order extended by another two weeks. And only those stranded in hometowns can apply for interstate travel. Good morning. The Movement Control Order MCO is due to end on April 28, has been extended by another two weeks until May 12. This was announced by Prime Minister Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin in a special televised broadcast on Thursday. This is the third time the government has decided to extend the MCO. The Prime Minister, however, pointed out that the number of new cases have dropped to double figures in the past week, compared to three digits previously, indicating that the MCO has been effective. He said the government would consider easing the restrictions spelled out in the MCO in stages if cases continue to show a sharp decrease. Kerana jumlah pesakit COVID-19 yang telah sembuh meningkat dengan ketara. Seramai 3,542 pesakit COVID-19 atau 63.2% daripada keseluruhan pesakit telah pun sembuh setakat ini. Dengan penurunan kes COVID-19 yang ketara ini dan kita harap tren ini akan berterusan, kerajaan telah memutuskan untuk memberikan sedikit kelonggaran. The Prime Minister also did not rule out the possibility that the order could be extended even further beyond the Hari Raya Aidil Fitri period. Dalam tempo ini, kerajaan akan menilai data-data terkini yang disediakan oleh Kementerian Kesihatan untuk menentukan langkah-langkah seterusnya. Saya tidak menolak juga kemungkinan bahawa PKP akan dilanjutkan lagi selepas ini. Dan ini bermakna Sedara-sedari mungkin tidak boleh menyambut hari raya di kampung seperti biasa. Tan Sri Muhyiddin also said the government will allow university students in hostels to return home. Before they are allowed to go home, all students must be healthy and do not display any COVID-19 symptoms. Jumlah pelajar yang terlibat adalah besar, iaitu hampir 100,000 orang. Jadi kita mesti rancang pergerakan mereka ini dengan teliti untuk pastikan ianya teratur dan tidak menyebabkan risiko jangkitan. The Prime Minister said the government was also considering to allow a single trip journey for those who were stuck in their hometowns or other places before phase one of the MCO was enforced. He said the government was gathering data and looking into the best way to facilitate their journey, including requiring them to register online using a Royal Malaysia Police application or making an appointment with the nearest police station. In his speech, the Prime Minister also said he has directed the Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning Unit and the Prime Minister's Department to formulate a comprehensive economic recovery plan for the short, medium and long term. He said the plan was aimed at ensuring the economic activities could be revived quickly after the MCO period has ended. Antara inisiatif yang sedang dirangka ialah membina keupayaan dan kemahiran rakyat menggalakkan perbelanjaan domestik, meningkatkan daya tahan industri termasuk PKS serta memupuk persekitaran pelaburan yang lebih positif untuk masa hadapan. He said the government would also consider reopening several other sectors and subsectors subject to strict conditions to guarantee that the companies continue to be competitive while workers can continue working in a safe environment. The detailed guidelines and conditions will be provided to the investors and corporate sector to restart their respective operations. 
Yang di Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria on Thursday wished all Muslims in Malaysia selamat berpuasa. Istana Negara's Comptroller of the Royal Household, Datu Ahmad Fadil Shamsuddin, said the King also called on all Muslims to develop self-restraint to do more prayers and other acts of worship during the fasting month. He also urged Muslims to take advantage of Ramadan by doing meaningful and righteous deeds, as the rewards are multiplied during the holy month. Datu Ahmad Fadil added that in line with the Phase 3 of the MCO, the King and Queen, as well as Istana Negara, have been advised by the Health Ministry against organising or attending any events throughout the month in order to curb the spread of the COVID-19 infection for the sake of the people. Due to this, Al Sultan Abdullah has urged Muslims, especially the frontliners, to stay resilient in observing the fasting month in a different atmosphere while practicing the new normal. He also hoped the people will be patient and adhere to instructions from authorities, as well as prayed for the nation to be protected from the COVID-19 pandemic. After some confusion over his earlier announcement, Senior Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob on Thursday reiterated that people will not be allowed to return to their hometowns during Ramadan. Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said those who are currently stranded at their hometowns and want to return to the cities and other urban areas may submit their applications, but there is no guarantee they will automatically be given the go-ahead to travel. Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said just before the MCO was enforced, a large number of Malaysians left for their hometowns as the period coincided with the start of school holidays. Once the MCO was implemented, they were forbidden to travel and have been marooned since. Banyak perkara-perkara yang perlu diteliti. Sebab itu saya kata bahawa kita akan mengkaji Kementerian Kesihatan, PDRM dan juga pihak MKN akan mengkaji secara menyeluruh. Sama ada benar atau tidak, kebenaran diberi atau tidak, terpulanglah. Itu pun kita jangka mereka uh, informasi, informasi yang kita akan dapat daripada polis tadi mungkin kita sehingga satu Mei. Selepas itu barulah perbincangan diadakan. Ha, jadi bukan otomatik mereka boleh balik ke Kuala Lumpur. He added the travel registration will be made available via the Gerak Malaysia mobile application or, alternatively, applicants can walk into any police station beginning Saturday. In his daily media briefing, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri also said that the standard operating procedures, including the operating hours for eateries, will remain largely the same during Ramadan during MCO. He said the only two changes to the current SOP would be the opening hours for markets and the operation of public transportation. Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said markets could open for an extra two hours until 2 p.m. to allow the public more time to purchase raw ingredients and wet food, while public transport will operate from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. in the evening, compared to 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. previously. Meanwhile, on daily updates on MCO compliance, Datu Sri Ismail said there has been a decrease in the number of people defying the MCO. He said 763 people were arrested on Wednesday for violating MCO rules, and of this, 648 have been remanded and 115 released on police bail. 71 new COVID-19 cases and two deaths were reported on Thursday. Health Director General Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said a large number of them were foreign workers from Selangor Mansion under the EMCO. He said the current priority is strengthening border control to ensure no new cases are entering the country and that there is no local transmission when considering lifting the MCO. Today we have 71 cases, 19 uh, cases are uh, imported cases. So which means 52 uh, local transmission. Out of the 52 local transmission, 22 involving foreign workers from India, Bangladesh, as well as uh, Pakistan. That is from Slangor mentioned. So again, so we need to really look into the local transmission. 
When we ease the MCO and uh, movement control, basically we need to look into the local transmission as well. One of the deaths related to COVID-19 was a 32-year-old health ministry staff who was a close contact of another COVID-19 positive case. She had a history of high blood pressure and died at the Enche Busa Haja Kalsum Hospital in Kluang, Johor. The patient is the third COVID-19 death involving a health ministry staff. The second victim is a 67-year-old Malaysian man who was a close contact of a COVID-19 patient from the Bali cluster. He died at the Tengku Ampuan Afzan Hospital in Kuantan. For the first time in history, Muslims will observe Ramadan with a new normal in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Datu Sri Dr. Zulkifli Muhammad Al-Bakri, explained that the new normal refers to no congregational prayers, including Friday and Taraway prayers, at mosques and surahs. This is in compliance with the MCO enforced by the government. Tak ada juga majlis berbuka puasa seperti biasa di masjid, iftar dan surau dalam tempoh PKP ini. Tak ada juga moreh yang biasa kita makan, minum selepas terawih dalam tempoh PKP. Alternatifnya, hidupkan ibadah dan tradisi Ramadan kita bawa ke rumah kita. Kita semua hendaklah beribadat dalam Ramadan sebagaimana sedia kala kerana ia adalah usaha memelihara agama Hifzuddin dan juga dalam makasih syariah. The senator who is in charge of Islamic affairs also said while it's important to perform religious activities during the holy month, protecting lives is important too. He also said that for the frontliners who found it hard to carry on fasting while working, they are allowed to break the fast to prevent it from affecting their focus and ability to treat patients. Malaysia remains firm in its commitment to safeguarding its interests and rights in the South China Sea. Foreign Minister Datu Sri Shamuddin Tun Hussein said Malaysia's position on the matter is clear and consistent. In a statement on Thursday, he said due to the complexity and sensitivity of the issue, all parties must work together to maintain peace, security and stability in the South China Sea, as well as increase efforts to build, maintain and enhance mutual trust and confidence. Datu Sri Shamuddin also said Kuala Lumpur's stance is that any disputes should be resolved amicably through peaceful means, diplomacy and mutual trust by all the concerned parties. He added that as a former defence minister, he was aware and conscious of the situation and has been communicating with relevant parties, including China and the United States, over the issue to avoid unintended accidental incidents in these waters. This, as the presence of warships and vessels in the South China Sea, has the potential to increase tensions that in turn may affect peace, security and stability in the region. Court of Appeal shifts to virtual proceedings. This and more after the breather. Thanks for staying with us. The Health Ministry has screened nearly 1,000 traders at the Chowkid Market in Kuala Lumpur on Thursday. The screening was carried out after three traders had been confirmed positive with COVID-19. It was believed that the three traders comprising two chicken sellers and a vegetable seller were infected with the virus either through their family members or customers at the market. The screening on the traders, including their foreign workers, were carried out for free to curb the spread of the virus in the area. For now, the market was still allowed to operate during the MCO, with over 700 market goers daily. The number of visitors at the market was also monitored every day by the Kuala Lumpur City Hall DBKL. Although the market was kept in a clean condition, it will be closed once a week to allow the DBKL to carry out sanitization process at the premises. 
The Court of Appeal proceedings shifted to virtual hearing Thursday to keep the judicial system running as the MCO is still in force. This is the first time in Malaysia's history that court proceedings were live streamed to the public. The live stream proceedings started at 10 a.m. at the judiciary's official website www.kehakiman.gov.my. The appeals involving three individuals against a transportation company was conducted remotely via video conferencing with a three-man court of appeal bench, lawyers and a deputy registrar going into the listed matters from their homes and offices. The bench presiding over the civil appeals comprised Datu Kamardin Hashim, who led judges Datu Li Sui Singh and Datu Aziza Nawawi. The proceedings, which took about an hour and 15 minutes, were heard together since they involved the same facts and question of law. Before the proceedings began, both parties stated their agreement on the mode of hearing via live streaming. The bench unanimously dismissed the appeals on grounds that there was no merit. Bank Negara Malaysia BNM is expected to cut the Overnight Policy Rate, or OPR, by another 75 basis points in anticipation of a contraction in the country's economy in 2020 and subdued inflation during the year. According to CGS CIMB Security Syndrome Rahat, the central bank is likely to reduce the OPR by 50 basis points next month, followed by a further 25 basis points cut in the second half of this year. The securities firm also predicts a sharp GDP contraction at negative 4.3% this year to keep Malaysia's economy below potential for the next 12 to 18 months. Malaysia's consumer price index, CPI, fell 0.2% year-on-year last month, the first negative inflation print since February 2019, with a plunge in the transport index, negative 8.9% year-on-year in March. There was, however, an uptick in food prices at 1.2% year-on-year. The last time the OPR was reduced was on March 3rd by 25 basis points. Petronas employees have donated 6.4 million ringgit to the National Disaster Management Agency, NATMA, under a voluntary salary contribution initiative. The funds will be used for the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, especially towards the distribution of essential supplies and personal protective equipment to frontline staff and volunteers. In a statement, its president and group CEO, Tan Sri Wan Zulkifli Wan Arifin, said the initiative received strong support from 9,500 participating staff who donated 10% of their April and May 2020 salaries. The salary contribution was in addition to Petronas's previous contributions towards the fight against the pandemic. This via its business operating units and subsidiaries in Malaysia, as well as throughout the world, bringing the total to 37.8 million ringgit. Still to come on Nightline, Indonesia records 11 more COVID-19 deaths. Stay tuned. On to the foreign front now. Singapore's daily new infections soared above the 1,000 mark for the fourth straight day, bringing the cumulative total to 11,178. On Thursday alone, 1,037 new infections were recorded on the island republic. According to its health ministry, migrant workers living in dormitories continue to make up the bulk of the increase, with Singaporeans and permanent residents making up just 21 of the new cases. It was understood that most of the migrant workers who were infected have mild symptoms and none of them is in intensive care. To date, a total of 21 foreign worker dormitories have been gazetted as isolation areas. As for community cases, the ministry said that the daily average of new cases has fallen from 36 cases two weeks ago to 25 in the past week. Unlinked cases in the community, meanwhile, have also decreased to an average of 17 per day in the past week from 21 two weeks ago. 
In the meantime, the total number of COVID-19 infections in Indonesia has risen to 7,775 cases, with 11 more deaths reported in the past 24 hours. According to a government spokesman, Ahmad Yurianto, the death toll now stands at 647. In his daily media briefing on the pandemic, Yurianto said another 357 new cases were reported, while there are 18,283 patients under surveillance for COVID-19. Jakarta remained the highest overall fatalities with 301 cases, followed by West Java, 74 cases, East Java, 60, and Central Java, 53, while the remaining cases were in other provinces. Meanwhile, according to its foreign minister, Retno LP Masudi, at least 387 of the total confirmed cases were foreign nationals. To date, 49 foreign nationals are receiving treatment, 27 others have recovered and 295 are under isolation. <laughs> Meanwhile, Thailand continued to make gains in containing the COVID-19 outbreak with 13 new cases confirmed over a 24-hour period and one death, taking the total number of cases to 2,839 and the total death toll to 50. According to a government spokesman, Dr. Tawisin Visanuyoti, the tally of the new cases was the lowest number of new cases in a month day since the peak of 188 on March 22nd. A total of 2,430 patients have recovered and returned to their homes, and 359 are undergoing treatment in hospitals. <laughs> China announced on Thursday it will donate another 30 million US dollars to the World Health Organization, WHO, to help in the global fight against the COVID-19, days after Washington said it would freeze funding. This came as the Chinese health authority said it received reports of 10 new confirmed cases on the mainland, of which six were imported. The other four new cases were domestically transmitted, with three cases reported in Heilongjiang province and the other one in Guangdong province. In Europe, Spain reported 440 new deaths on Thursday, bringing the total number of fatalities in the country to 22,157. According to the health ministry, the number of official daily deaths is slightly up from the previous two days, but far below the peak of 950 in early April. Spanish health officials also registered more than 4,600 new contagions on Thursday, taking the total number of confirmed cases to 214,535. <laughs> Over in France, around 544 people died from the disease in the last 24 hours, taking the total death toll to 21,340. Its health official, Jerome Solomon, said 1,827 new cases were reported, bringing the total cases tally to 159,877. On a positive note, Solomon also said that the number of patients in French hospitals fell by 365 to 29,741 in the last 24 hours, with the number of those in intensive care units falling by 215 to 5,218. Now let's take a look at the highlights of Malaysia's main newspapers for Friday, April the 24th. The New Straits Times and Harian Metro highlight on how the Muslims will observe the Ramadan in what's called the new normal era in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. While a report on the extension of the movement control order until May 12th gets the front page of Berita Harian and the Malaysian Reserve. Do get your copies today or subscribe to the e-paper. Now, in closing, a creek in Navi, Mumbai, India, turned pink this week after over thousands of flamingos had gathered in the area due to lower human activity because of the coronavirus lockdown. Visuals of this magnificent sight wrapped up Nightline this time around. I'm Raymond Goh. Thank you for tuning in. And from all of us at Nightline, here's wishing our Muslim viewers a meaningful and rewarding Ramadan. Selamat berpuasa. Take care.